Hello, I'm Raf. I'm playing a Warforged Gloomforged named Styx. Uh, he is a paladin and uh, has been recently reawakened and is learning about the world around him with some new friends that he's just met. Hey everyone, I'm, I'm Jared. I, um, I'm playing the character of Luther. Uh, he's a Dampier. Uh, he is a fighter that specializes in firearms, a bit of an investigator, and I am the great, great, great uncle of uh, Grinner. Hi, I'm Jacob. I'm playing Tifla, the Goblin Ranger. Uh, she is a wonderful hunter and medical genius. Hi, I'm Haz. I'm playing uh, Theodore Ursa, the satyr druid, who's a kind of a, a charismatic druid who's unwillingly taken Tifla un under his under his wing as she's followed him through the, the forest for the past few months. Hi, my name is Josh. I am from the Roll Together RPG stream, and I will be playing Killian Maxwell, a half elf warlock who has come to Barovia. He was with the party previously but has lost them and has joined up with the Tempest on their adventures. G'day, I'm Tom. I'm playing Jonal, the Asimir wizard. Um, he is on the pursuit of good and evil, uh, finding out the best and worst in this world and he's doing that with a little bit of naivety and optimism. And I'm Owen, the dungeon master of our Curse of Strahd campaign. A warning, gentle viewer. Curse of Strahd is a horror-themed Dungeons & Dragons campaign, which means you may hear adult language or adult themes throughout this episode. Hello! 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 hello. Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to the Lost Archives. It is wonderful to see you all again, joining us for our Curse of Strahd campaign. Now, for those of you who are watching on the uh, on the YouTubes or watching on Twitch, you will notice a familiar face, an old friend come to uh, come to cause havoc and mayhem once again. Josh from Roll Together has joined us uh, back as the character of Killian Maxwell, our uh, our lovely warlock, divine soul warlock, I think now isn't it? Divine patron warlock. Um, during the course of our adventures, so wonderful to have you back, Josh. It is uh, it is brilliant to have you joining us once again. Hello, everybody. I've missed being here. I've been in the chat as much as I can be, so shenanigans. Shen <laughs> shenanigans, indeed. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I believe the party have you to thank for one of the uh, summoned monsters as well. Uh, early yes. on when you first ducked out, that was quite fun. Um, we do have one apology for tonight. Unfortunately, Jared is unable to make it tonight. Um, his work had some uh, had some after hours things that they needed him to do. So unfortunately, he. Uh, he couldn't come and uh, couldn't come and join us tonight, so I will play the character of Luther tonight while he is away, which means we are defaulting back to his um, sort of more Western American accent uh, in his absence, so that I can differentiate it more, uh, and because it's too much of a meme now not to do. Now we do have a couple of fun announcements. Um, the first one is not so much fun. I've already said this before, but I'll, I'll quickly um, flag again. Unfortunately, next Wednesday and next Thursday there won't be any sessions. So Wednesday the twenty fourth and Thursday the twenty fifth. I'm away for a conference, so I won't be able to run uh, the D&D session Return of the Giants on Wednesday or the Avatar Legends session on Thursday. The good news is I have recorded a whole bunch of uh, content to pop up on YouTube during that absence. So normally when the episodes would drop on the Wednesday, the uh, Friday, and then the Monday, uh, instead you'll have some playthroughs of The Wandering Village, which is a really fun sort of cozy um, city survival game, I'd say. Um, so that'll be dropping as well. And I will also record some extra episodes of Synergy as well, which is another uh, very, very interesting kind of like colony survival game. I'm really starting to play into a certain genre of game. Um, I will I will <laughs> differentiate again after <laughs> now that I've finished Disco Elysium, I will broaden back out again to other genres. But uh, I seem to be in a real like cozy simulation city sim game at the moment vibe. I don't know why. Maybe I need the coziness. Uh, so I'll have those episodes coming out in uh, in our absence, um, but we still have Curse of Strata on Monday. So for those of you who are worried about Curse of Strata, it will still be on next Monday. We should probably do a quick shout out to our friends at Roll Together. Josh, would you like to share a little bit about the new campaign that you guys have got running over at uh, Roll Together RPG? I can indeed. Hello, for those of you who have not listened to the past five minutes, my name is Josh. I'm from Roll Together <laughs> RPG. We are a UK-based streaming group that stream on mondays and tuesdays at 6 p.m uk time i'm sh pretty sure that's ridiculously early australian time yeah um very early but you can catch all of our stuff on youtube and podcast just by searching roll together rpg our current campaign that we're doing is a new long-running one that's set in a homebrew world that i've made myself homebrew 
ancient technologies, lots of strange creatures, and uh, an NPC that nobody likes. Come and have a look. It's fun. You it can is see a... all of the <laughs> origin episodes for each of the cap- uh, each of the characters on YouTube as well. I was about to say, it's a super cool setting. I love your homebrew world. And uh, I was about to call out the origin episodes for each of the characters is an idea that I am 100% stealing for our next campaign because it is so cool. Um, and it does work really, really well having that sort of like character introduction and kind of getting into their head and understanding their goals, their motivations beyond what's shared with the rest of the, the group early on. It is really, really cool. So that is something I will be stealing, Josh. Um, and it's it's uh it's the most easy DM prep ever because you just get them to send you their six page backstory and you just use all of it against them. You yeah. just do their backstory. Yeah. Which is it's it's sort of what I do anyway. So it's perfect. It's gonna be yeah. fantastic. Um one of the things we really like to do is uh do little like character arcs as we go through. Um so have like a couple of episodes focus on like one character to see their growth and what's going on, a couple of episodes for another. And I see that you guys do a very similar setup, which I love so much. It makes it sort of much more like a um like a show, I guess is the best way to describe it. Like mm. how you get arcs for characters in shows. Um so yeah, definitely, definitely recommend going and checking out uh Roll to Get This Brand New Campaign. Links will be in the description below so that you can go and check it out. Um it will just be there, you can just click on it. Um otherwise if you're watching on youtube i'll also have it as a pinned comment to make life super easy um so i think that is all the fun announcements we have to share i will quickly double check however because i get in trouble if i don't check yes i have uh one thing i just want uh, to, before uh... before you go any further if it involves a certain individual a musician i'm gonna stop you right there no need to continue. Which musician? Because I, I think know we know which musician. Musicians. I don't care any musician. If you've got no. any news involving any I'm... musician, I'm just going to put a hard rule on it. <laughs> I just realised I don't need to be. I don't need to be like. I'm sorry, you hate it, Kieran. Uh, no, I just want to want to talk about a, a new TV show that I've been watching. Uh, let everyone know about it. Okay. Um, it's pretty good. Um, you should probably all check it out. You probably haven't heard of it. It's called The Last of Us. Um, <laughs> just finished watching the first season for the first time. <laughs> You're uh, um, pretty good. You're it's uh, like to an the adaptation party. for a. Yep. For a little known video game. Um, yep. Yeah, an, in, an indie, an indie studio. <laughs> an indie game. Yeah. <laughs> indie TV show off an indie game, yeah. yeah. You're, a bit, small. you're a bit late to the party. Are you literally just watching it for the first time now, Jacob? No, I just finished it for the first time. Sorry. Yeah, Are you in. just, sorry, have you just finished it for the first time now? What took you so long? Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, honestly, I have a partner who doesn't like zombie stuff, and it, was, it took this long to finally let's watch it so it, it is true you are enmeshed and unable to watch things separately so that does that does check out i'm sorry i'm sorry i care about my partner and want to share things with them that's my bad owen you should give it a crack one time <laughs> <laughs> that was also not on stream damn that was one hell of a bite back it was harsh um yeah Woof. i mean if any of it was true i'd probably be sweating but um as it is, just let it wash over me like the waters. Um, <laughs> and that's the last time I'm ever going to throw to Jacob for a uh, for a news update. That's not true. No, it's yeah, definitely you've said true. that many times before, actually. So yeah, I I, it's, it's also fair. We said it last week. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, the great thing is with the magic of editing and um, some little finger scissors, none of this happened. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> let's... Can you give me a little gif emote that just says, I'm not going to throw to Jacob anymore. <laughs> oh, I'll make one. If I make one, will you put it in? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to Canva right we've, now. We've clearly established that, like, if you make something, I'll, I'll probably put it in. <laughs> Doesn't require much effort to convince me to do something a bit funny. Um, alrighty, let's do our recap. Let's jump into the session. Uh, Josh, uh, obviously, uh, you were here for a bit of the last uh, last session. I saw you in uh, saw you in chat, so you kind of know what went down at the very end of last session. But um, I've got a slightly more involved, thorough recap ready to go just to catch you up on some things that have been missed. And we will actually quickly start the session with what Killian has been up to, because that is very relevant. The choices you make are very relevant to the next little bit of what's going to happen with the rest of the players. So I will do our recap and then we will jump straight into the session. So previously on Curse of Strahd, our series has been following the adventures of the Tempest Adventuring Guild, Theo, Luther, Jonor, Grinner, and Tithla. Having become trapped within the realm of Barovia while searching for some missing adventurers, the team have been travelling west in hopes of an escape from this dark land. The group have now emerged victorious in their fight against the Blight Druids of Yesterhill, 
After defeating a strike force of druids and an enormous blight tree sent to capture the Wizard of Wine's vineyard, the team learnt that Davian Martikov and his son Elvia had been taken to the druids' ritual grounds. While taking a moment to prepare for the upcoming battle, the team revealed to Lara Martikov the events that had transpired at the Abbey of St. Markovia, impressing her enough to reveal the secrets of the Martikov family. Taken below the winery into a hidden chamber, the team discovered the Martikov family were in fact were-ravens, a lineage passed down since before the mists and darkness had descended on these lands. Having spent generations gathering intel and looking for allies able to take on Strahd and Sergei, Lara was now at least partly convinced the party might be the ones they had been searching for. Fully rested and ready to launch the rescue mission, the team, accompanied by questionable ally Raspip, made their way to Yester Hill and prepared a plan of attack. Before the plan could be fleshed out further, however, Raspip got bored and decided to act on the draft version, walking up the hillside as a distraction. The rest of the party, now panicking about what to do next, could only watch on as the druids sprang from hidden alcoves and attacked the tiny gnome. This, however, triggered Raspip's trap spell, a polymorph turning himself and Stefania into giant apes. With the combined might of the druids now firmly fixed on the 14-foot-tall apes smashing the ritual circle to pieces, the gang snuck around the edge of the hill and approached the tunnel entrance to the caves below. While the apes were able to deal some impressive damage, the spell eventually failed and left, two, left the two ex-apes exposed and trapped amongst the druid forces. Jonor leapt into action, detonating a shatter spell on the ritual stones, destroying the magic and the druids that were standing too close. While Raspit cleaned up the remaining forces with a fireball, Luther and Theo arrived at the entrance to the underground chamber, bumping into a figure lurking around the roots. This figure revealed itself as another off-worlder, a scout with animalistic traits calling herself Sen. With the common purpose of taking out the druids, the team agreed to a loose alliance before heading below into the dark recesses of the cavern formed by the tree roots. The enormous, bone-white tree was revealed to be a Golthias tree, a necromantically infused plant which was the source of both the druids' magic and the blights they controlled. The team launched into combat, Theo and Jonor unleashing fire magic, Styx heading straight into melee combat, while Luther and Tithla focused on targeted ranged damage. Raspip quickly found himself out of magic, having blown through all his mana on turning into a giant ape multiple times earlier. With an easy target and clear sights, the tree quickly took Raspip down and then started to go after Jonor, taking him down as well. However, Tithla and Luther weren't about to let their friends drop, rushing in to take out the grappling vines and bring their friends back from the brink. Theo, his hatred for the bright of their, his hatred for the blight druids burning bright in his heart, and his claws burning with the fire of Tithla's Drake, dealt the final blow to the Golthias tree, turning its core to ash. With the roots and boughs slowly burning away, Styx decided to try and cast some magic on a fragment of a branch in an attempt to understand and change the necromantic influences on it. This, however, drew the ire of Theo, who launched into an intense and brief argument with Styx, drawing the rest of the party in as well. Raspip used this opportunity to steal a cursed ring from a corpse hidden amongst the roots and sneak out. Noticing his absence too late, Tithla rushed ahead to try and catch up to him, while the rest of the team investigated the corpse beneath the tree, discovering it was the remains of one of the adventurers they had been attempting to locate, a Sonia Brightleaf. Catching up to Raspip, Tithla attempted to convince him to stay, but soon found herself abandoned and alone in the woods. Emerging from the darkness, a familiar figure stepped out from behind the trees and spoke with Tithla, revealing one of the party might now be working for Sergei, having been replaced or corrupted fairly recently. Sensing the rest of the party coming to find Tithla, Strahd invited the group to dinner, promising an escort would come and collect them soon. We left off with the party now reunited, Styx having buried the body of the fallen adventurer, and the group getting ready to head back to the Wizard of Wine's vineyard. That is where we left off last session. Bit of a bit of a spicy finish. We're going to be jumping in not with Tithla and Theo, who are currently making their way back from the woodlands to meet up with Joan or Styx and Luther, but instead, many miles away, to the mountain overlooking the village of Kresk, and the abbey nestled amongst the peaks. Killian, the rest of the party rushing ahead took off about three days ago to go and try and rescue the, uh, the Martikov family and investigate what had happened. Sorry, two days ago, actually, sorry, not three, two days ago, to go and investigate what had happened to the Martikov family and the attack that had occurred on the Wizard of Wine's vineyard. 
as they left, you were left behind, choosing to keep an eye on the uh, the newly purified uh, abbot to make sure the magic that you had uh, helped participate in stayed true, as well as keep an eye on, I, I'd say probably a number of the residents of the uh, of the abbey. Uh, Irina being probably the most, it's probably the forefront in your mind, keeping an eye on Irina, knowing that at least Sergei is after her, um, wanting to make sure that she's safe. I guess as well, you had another charge to keep an eye on as well. Um, the uh, the eldest son of the uh, of the Martikov family, um, uh, Davian's eldest son and Stefani's younger brother, the uh, the Martikov boy who had run up to warn you of the uh, of the attack on the vineyard, um, uh, Adrian. You could see that he was a bit injured, making sure that he was safe and, and that he was healing. As the group take off, Killian, what would be your primary goal for the next sort of day or so? What would, would have been ma- making sure that everybody's all right, healed up, uh, patched up in whatever way possible. Not just those people, but the mongrel folk as well, those that got injured during the confrontation with the druid at the abbey. Helping the abbot with any defences that need sort of bringing up or anything. Um, and if there's any spare time, spending some time with Adrian and maybe teaching him a bit more magic because... He'd done that before when they were at the um, at the ab- not at the abbey at the uh, Wizard of Wines. Absolutely, uh, the abbot indeed does want to work on the defences around the Abbey of Saint Markovia. Now that his mind is uh, cleared from the corrupting influence of the mists, now that his attention and focus are, are returned to him, his alignment once again uh, lawful good. You can see for the first sort of hour or so once uh, the party have left, the abbot going into his study and burning sections of it. Books of knowledge that he had gathered, information that he had taken from the torture and dismemberment and a number of other very horrible things that he had done, dissections and things like that, burning that knowledge to remove it forever burning samples, burning sections. There's almost this fire burning within him, the radiant light coming out of his palm, vaporizing large sections of his work. As soon as that's done, he joins you in looking around, taking care of those who are injured. The mongrel folk brought into the hospital, no longer being treated like servants or or pets, being treated with respect, being treated like people. And you can see this profound change has come over the abbot. Very, very distinct difference in how he acts now versus how he was before the ceremony spell. Once the abbot has finished taking care of the mongrel folk, he invites you to help channel your magic energy through him to reenact some of the magical defenses that used to surround the the Abbey of St. Markovia. A series of glyphs positioned at various key locations along the walls um, with your connection to the divine. Your magic is the perfect, perfect source to help channel and guide, to help repower, repower and recharge a number of these glyphs. Could I get you to please roll me a spell casting check? So as if you're doing a spell attack, so d20 plus your proficiency, plus your spell casting modifier. So if you've got like a cantrip attack, Eldritch you can just- Blast. Yeah, Eldritch Blast is absolutely perfect. 17. 17 is pretty damn good. As you assist the abbot in these efforts for the next four hours, Killian, you continually channel uh, large amounts of divine light and divine magic through the abbot to recharge a number of these glyphs. By the time you're finished, this shimmering, semi-transparent dome of golden light occasionally flickers as snow crosses the barrier. The abbey now far more secure than it has ever been since its arrival in Barovia. Um, The abbot, looking around at this, reaches down, picks up a, a, a clump of snow, rolls it into a snowball and throws it from the outside in at the uh, at the dome. As soon as it strikes the outside of the dome, you watch as the snowball immediately dissipates. The energy lost as this wave, this rippling golden wave spreads out, almost like fibers moving against us, a sea as it ripples backwards. And then as soon as the energy is lost, the snowball falls apart, the snow crackling through the dome. Ah, it has, uh, it has worked as we had hoped. Uh. Gillian, I must thank you for your assistance in repairing this. It has been um, has been good to rely on a, on a being as powerful as yourself, one that is uh, 
capable of channeling divine magic, this would have taken much longer without your assistance. Uh, I thank you. I would require you to test, though, if you could please uh, unleash your magic from the outside. Uh, we do need to see how it would withstand certain uh, magical effects, uh, if you would be so kind. Uh, certainly. I, If I... It stops the snow... Stop the snowball from getting out. If I try to get out, it's not going to do the same thing, is it? I'm, I'm no, free you to may, come and go. You can walk through. Only, only objects traveling at a certain velocity uh, should be affected by the, the, the dorm itself, and magic, any any source of magic uh, powerful enough should trigger the uh, the protective barrier. You, you should be able to walk through. Even even running shouldn't be, you shouldn't be moving fast enough for it to be a problem. So okay, it's well, I'll, I'll, I'll go outside and test it. Perfect. As you head out, what spell would you cast at the, the barrier to uh, to test it? I, I think I'd walk quite far down the slope, so I wouldn't be too close to it, because I don't want any like blast back or anything from any spells that I'm doing. And as I'm stood Very there, fair. I just sort of I hold my hand out, and this almost like divine light appears in my hand, and uh, a pistol appears, and I just point it at the. I haven't used this spell for a few days, but I point it at the dome and I fire an eldritch blast at it. Perfect. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask: Does the pistol resemble at all Luther's fire hand? After I guess yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> I, did, I did wonder if there yeah. was a homage there. As you like summon this golden, this glowing golden pistol into your hands, partly transparent, the magic swirling around your fingers as you pull the trigger and this blast of eldritch energy flies out towards the dome. The second the energy hits the dome, you watch it it's immediately dissipated, the dome absorbing all of the energy from the eldritch blast and dissipating it across the surface. Again, that, that rippling movement of hundreds of thousands of tiny golden threads suddenly visible as they are illuminated by the blast and then fading back into uh, intangibility once again. You watch as the abbot slowly nods, places a hand against the dome and concentrates for a moment and then takes it away. Yeah, that is that is good. Could you roll me damage, Killian? I want to see... Um, just just to get the damage for your Eldritch Blast. I want to see how much. I rolled a one. It was a five. <laughs> you watch as the abbot nods and goes, Ah, that is... Um, very little, very little damage to the dome itself. That is wonderful. The uh, the strength of these spells we now know is uh, strong enough to withstand a, a blast of powerful magic. Uh, right, Killian? Yes, that was a very strong version of that spell. I could not have made it any stronger if I tried. And I'm glad that it was stood the full force of... I'm being really sarcastic when I say this, but I'm, I'm glad that it would stood the full force of my magic. Yeah, me too. It is, uh, it is somewhat of a relief. Uh, come, please. Uh, you must be uh, must be tired after exerting so much magical energy. Yes, I am a little bit. I, I could do with something to eat and a drink. Oh. Perfect. As you head back inside and uh, rest and recover, in the evening, Irina approaches you and sits down. You can see that she's actually changed her clothes recently. Um, no longer wearing her traveling gear, but just dressed in a very simple tunic, um, a little leather coat over the top to help sort of keep her keep her warm. Um, the sleeves slightly rolled up so that her forearms are clear. Um, you can see around her uh, her wrist is a is a bracelet made of what looks like silver links, forming almost these like thicker chains, um, with a few little trinkets, a few little charms uh, attached to the bracelet. Um, and as she stretches and sits down, she nods at you and smiles. Uh, Killian, um. How are you doing? I just wanted to check you and the abbot wandered off for a bit earlier and uh, just want to make sure you're okay. Yes, we're fine. We were just checking the the security of the of the abbey and all of that. I'm okay. I'm just I'm I'm worried about the others. Um, they all went off so quickly. I just I'm hoping that they're okay and I'm hoping that everything at the at the wine at the Wizards of Wines is okay as well. I'm hoping they haven't gotten into too much trouble. To be honest, I, I am a little worried about them as well. I I know they're capable. I know they are uh, powerful sorcerers and fighters, but um, I, I can't help but worry about them. I, it's good to know that you'll feel the same way. Uh, we can we can share in that worry. Um, Adrian came up and spoke to me earlier. He said that he was very keen to, to head back to his family. Uh, and while I would normally offer to to take him, I, I have a feeling that if um if I was to head out into the... Uh, unprotected areas around the abbey and as far as the wizard of wines um if something were to happen to me i, I get the feeling that um 
Luther and Theo. Maybe Theo in particular would be very cross with me. And um I don't I don't want him as an enemy. <laughs> the the bear form he takes is is terrifying. The antlers and teeth. So I I, I was going to ask, um, if Adrian's going to be uh, making his way uh, to the winery. How would you feel about accompanying him, making sure he gets there safely? I, I, it doesn't sound like he's going to take no for an answer, and I understand it's his family. I mean, there's, there's nothing I wouldn't do for my brother. I... Do you have Do you have family, Killian? Do you have siblings? I I do. I have a I have a, a younger a younger brother, and um, parents died a long time ago. But I have a I have a younger brother. Uh, I have not sinned since I've been here, obviously, but. Um, I understand that feeling that Adrian feels. I imagine your brother's uh, quite worried, trying to look for you. I hope, I hope we can can get you reunited with him soon to to be without one's family. It's not right. No, I think with what the abbot is now, with the abbot now cleansed by Jonah and Luther's magic, I think, I think he's our best way forward to leaving this place. I agree with you about taking Adrian back, and I will definitely accompany him back. I don't think he should be out there on his own, especially if there are any druids or anything around that might want to grab him. And you staying here is incredibly important. We know that Sergei is at least after you, so and you're protected here. So it might feel like a bit of a prison at the moment, but until that situation is sorted. Your safety is incredibly important. I and, understand. And, and, uh, Theo wouldn't have gone to the trouble that he did to get you here if that wasn't true. So, No, I, I absolutely understand. And obviously I'm grateful for all the help that uh, you and your companions have... <laughs> not just help. <laughs> Everything you've done. Um... There was one thing. I was... I wasn't going to bring it up. But... I've been having... Weird dreams. For a, a few nights now. Um, the, the third night I had the dream was when Theo came and... And, uh, and rescued me from Valaki. From that... Uh, that creature. That spectre that was coming through the window. I, I think that's what he described it as. Like a white or something. Uh, I've been having... Um, having dreams, weird dreams, of some place that looks like this, but I just, sorry, they're just dreams, don't, don't worry about it, sorry. Uh, no, if, if Jonah's taught me anything, there is power in dreams. Does, does Jonah know about dreams? Is that, is I've that some heard he... him mention it. Ah, perhaps I should talk to him about it when we next see each other. Um, maybe that would be that good. Would be good. Uh, um, but tell him. You said it reminds you of this place? Please. It, I mean, if, you, if you're if you up for sharing it, I'd be interested to hear it. It might be something that might be a lead for us, if anything. Um, if I meet up with the others. Uh, but the village of Borovia, where I grew up, um, in my dream, it's, it's far larger. Um, there are houses, maybe 50, 60 houses. There's a, a large town square. There are people, sunlight streaming down through the through the clouds above, lighting up the, the lands. The grass is green. The trees are, are, are laden with dark green leaves and, and fruit. There, <laughs> an apple orchard, where now there is a graveyard. It looked like an apple orchard had grown up. I wondered if maybe I was seeing what could be. Maybe it is just my hope for a better place. But I saw him in the dream as well. Um, Strad. He looked younger, happier, smiling. I, I saw him in a carriage riding up towards the castle. But it was... It was incomplete. And I had the weirdest sense that this was... my home. It was, it was really weird. 
There's been a few others like it as well. Dreams that, that seem... Like de deja vu, right? The feeling I have seen this or done this before. That is the only way to describe it. And the feeling's been growing stronger. The dream's more vivid. Um, the one I had last night, uh, I was walking. I was holding someone's hand, a young man. He had <laughs> lovely wavy blonde hair, not unlike Jonas. Um, we, were, we were holding hands walking. I'm not sure where, but it felt happy. Like he was my friend. Uh, and there was this um, structure made of stone embedded in the, the side of a, of a hill. And we were walking there together. And he said, I said something. I can't remember. The, the dreams fade quickly after I wake up. If I'm not quick writing them down, uh, they fade. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's more than okay. Are you... And my... My brain instantly goes to the other Irina that's walking around. The flesh golem. made one. Yeah. Yeah, the flesh golem one. Um, are you sure that's not... Could be... Memories, maybe? Of a past life we know that there's some sort of connection between you and Sergei maybe the blonde head one might have been Sergei especially if you had an image of a younger Strad. I did wonder that I, I, it's why I thought I should probably mention it it wasn't until the dream last night that I sort of made the connection that they be that maybe they were memories. Um they um there is one other thing. Um they they did call me by a different name. I, I do remember uh Sergei talking to me, uh referring to me as a, as a different name. He called me Tatania. Right. Does that name mean anything? Have you have you heard that name before? I feel like I feel like we have heard that name before, but I I don't know where. It just sounds so familiar. I, I can't I can't remember if that name was in the book that Jonal has. I could have sworn when Jonal tried to read the book outside of the tower. That there was something in there to do. There was a name. That name was in there somewhere. I think. Can Josh make a history check to see if he remembers that? Josh can absolutely make a history check to see if he remembers that. Absolutely. That's a thirteen. Thirteen. Killian. Yeah. You've definitely heard the name mentioned. Definitely Jonal mentioned it. Whether it was from the book. That does sound right, but you think there's more to it. You think maybe you've also heard it in reference to something else. The name has definitely the, been thrown about. Yeah, because the flesh golem name is Vasilka. That's what you've you, you've heard her refer to as Vasilka. She, pointing to Vasilka, is not Titania as far as we're aware whether uh, she's a descendant of your you're a descendant of hers went into Vizilka and can, it's like a family connection can thing. we we know that, that can we this place has been around memories? for a long time can we inherit memories from our from our parents and grandparents I from where I'm from there is and it's normally an elven thing elves are, have the ability to be able to pass down memories from previous lives it's done through a, a particular ritual um i've come across instances where humans have been able to replicate this ritual but not to the same extent um so it's possible hmm. well um maybe maybe it's best if we we 
check with John or if, if he is uh, if he's skilled and 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 trained in understanding dreams. I I mean, Jono strikes me as a scholar. I I, I can't can't believe I didn't think of asking him about this sooner. I thought his um, his knowledge was mainly focused on magic, but uh, if his specialty is understanding dreams or, or interpreting dreams, or if that's something he he works with, is he an, an oniromancer? Uh, um, uh, a dream wizard? Oniromancer? Someone who dreams the future or dreams the, the past, the present? Do you have those in your land? Oniromancers? That is a story we have. Well, we call them we, we call them seers. Uh, where I come from. Um, yes, we use that word too. Jonor is very adept with cards, the like um, fate cards. Like he, he Madame has a stack Ava. With him. Similar. She reads the cards too. A fortune teller. Um, yes, uh, we've, Diviner. we've met Diviner. Madame Ava. Yeah, there was, hmm. she told us a lot about. Um, Places that we shouldn't go, or at least at least she told me that, um, and a weapon that and that needed to be found. Hmm. Weapon made of sunlight. Well, hopefully, hopefully you will find it soon. Uh, well, I I won't keep you up any longer. Um, I'll I'll go let uh, Adrian know that you'll you'll accompany him in the morning. I will uh, go and try and get some sleep, and I'll let you know if I have another dream. Sounds good. Please, please, just just be careful. Perfect. And with I know we're killing... in a safe space at the moment. But <laughs> the we... safest. <laughs> in the safest place there is, but you know, the ab- by the abbot, we don't know what's going to happen because there's no yeah. bolts here. Killing, you may have a long rest. We'll jump back with Styx, Jonor, Tithla, and Theo while you have your long rest. We'll uh, jump back to the rest of the party. Theo, uh, where we left off, you had just caught up with Tithla in the woods. Tithla had sort of questioned you about whether it was you, you don't really know what that means. She's talking crazy. But as you, uh, as you begin You're to crazy, head back, not me. Yeah, as you be, she's talking to voices in her head again as well. Um, one of them is this very That's sexy, normal, low bass voice that occasionally narrates things that she sees. She seems to be answering it, which is really weird. Um, as uh, as Tithla, no. <laughs> as uh, Tithla. As Tesla, as the as the two of you uh, rejoin Jonah and Styx and Luther, um, Styx, I believe you were digging a hole to bury the uh, the gnome, the Sonia Brightleaf. Um, Styx, hmm. you are a paladin. I am a paladin. Do you have any in your in your mind in your core? Do you have any? Um, funeral rites that you perform anything in particular you do to honor this fallen person because i know well, we had briefly talked about your because you, you don't necessarily have to have a god per se and i know we had had a brief mm. chat behind the scenes about your god um well w- what's interesting is my my mistress is kind of more of a psychopomp than anything else so she's probably not I don't think Styx overly cares about the dead body because it's a husk, it's useless. The important bits are gone. Yeah. Um, so, honestly, he's probably just burying it because he knows that the others would want that. Um, as far as he's concerned, just let the bugs feast on it. There's nothing there anymore. Fair enough. So I don't think he actually would have much in the way of funerary rites aside from just being respectful for the other's sakes and, and just kind of plonking her in gently and tipping the soil on top. You tried yeah. to do more for a stick Very... we found in a cave. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I don't worry. For that. <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> um, Jonor, I imagine, however, as a uh, follower of Lysander, the goddess of the sun, uh, you may have uh, a prayer or two that you... Uh, you mutter. We'll see. Under- Luther, I think we can um, we can do the proper proper ceremony here. I've seen uh, I've seen you do this. We'll, um, we'll we'll conduct our service together. Um, Too right, he- Jonah. Uh, six, feel free to, to dig up a dig a hole. We'll 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 handle the the, the religious stuff. All right. Um, I would set up a series of different lights, uh, rocks, and 
maybe a trinket or so from uh, Luther to be placed at the head of the grave and go through the ceremony. Yeah. Perfect. Um, as you as you finish performing your your rite of the sun, um, sticks just pushes the dirt, <laughs> fills in the grave without much <laughs> ceremony, pats it down, and then steps on it to harden the area around it. Um, at this point, Tithla and Theo uh, rejoin. So, real quick, um, I, I can't see or hear Raph, and I've quit and reloaded this. And I've quit out of my browser entirely. That's okay. That's okay. Raf, if you do a quick that's reload, probably for the best. we'll jump over to, to uh, Tithla and Theo rejoining Sorry. the rest of the party. And he's I reckon by the time you so jump back in. He's been saying some pretty inflammatory shit about Oh, you. no, don't worry. I'm going to clip the VOD. So that's- <laughs> I've, I've, never, I've never heard someone refer to goblins uh, in that way before. Um, Jacob, that's can you see Raf now? Goblin D's nuts. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> yeah, right. Shouldn't have set that up way too well oh, for you. I wish I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> you wish you weren't gob. Oh yeah. So, um, Tithla and Theo, you uh, you rejoin the rest of the party just as Styx finishes like stamping down the dirt on the grave and then dusts his hands off. Yes. Yeah, um. Well, as we're coming back, I mean, I would when I got to Tithla, I kind of picked her up and pulled her into a a big. Monshari, are you, are you okay? What happened? I was so worried when you ran off into the woods. Oh, I was, I was just trying to get, get him, get him to, to come back and say goodbye. He just left. He, he, he was never going to come back. He's, um, I'm, sometimes you cannot get so attached to to people that um, are so transient. I guess, I guess everyone's just gonna leave, aren't they? No, not everyone. Yeah. Not everyone will leave. But some will always leave. Um, that's his life. Um, but Vaskip in particular was a negative influence on you. That's on all of us on on the world. Remember, we we we've already established that he is probably Strahd in disguise. Um. I don't know. Uh, he he did get knocked down by a tree root. Uh. I have the feeling Strata be a mat more uh, well, all, competent all than that. Is, is to gain gain a higher level of support amongst his following. Well, what? How would we know? Um, look to see if the blood splatter on him was in a suspiciously straight line, perhaps. <laughs> we're not. Go- we're not getting into that. It's not going. It's, <laughs> trust me, it's not worth it. <laughs> what do you mean? I, well, in, in the case of Raspip, I think it was pretty obvious that, well, he was a means to an end. He, he was not a friend. He threatened to kill us on an almost hourly basis just for looking at his possessions. What? Yeah, but everyone's got quirks. Uh, that's Most that's more of a... I would call that a trait rather than a quirk. Uh, maybe on a checklist for some sort of like psychopathy sort of test. <laughs> yeah, sticks. Sticks is going to crouch down in front of Tifla. This is going to flinch. <laughs> just back Fair. real quick. Big old purple eye and um, creepy teeth just kind of looking at her for a second. And then Six is just going to say, All things end. That is both good and bad. But it is a fact of life. Do you? Do things ever end, but you don't know that they've ended, but they keep pretending that they're going on? I guess. I I don't know, but both good things and bad things will all end. This okay. is a blessing and a curse. Okay. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna go now. I don't know whatever this is. Um Life is pain. Do you do you remember what I was back when we explored the woods together back in um in well, like three weeks ago? Yes, or a little bit more than three weeks ago, before we joined the Tempest Adventuring Guild. Back when you and I oh, used to explore the woods. Uh, back back when they start. tried to buy me, yes. Yes, after the buying and before we left on this adventure. Mm-hmm. I, I, Four weeks ago. I was explaining 
the forest and how everything is in in harmony everything is in cycles there is birth there is death there is decay as then there is rebirth from the ashes so to speak so it is with it with relationships they they come they reach their peak and they will all fade in one way or another some last a lot longer some like like zimati oak some are saplings that are only there for a short time and some are like the black druids and they need to be purged from the world raspip falls into this category mm. Pretty how would you put. know that we had that chat how, how did i know we had the chat because i was there yeah okay interesting what, what are you talking about nothing uh, uh, did something happen in the woods you you seemed off i even I mean, you do always get sad when somebody somebody leaves, but you seem even more off. You're asking more, not, not just deep questions than usual. Usually, you just cry and say, well, "Why did my best friend leave?" I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, for podcast listeners, no Jacob's reason. really he's really crying. It's really got to him emotionally. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's nothing. Why? What are you trying to find out? Not, not trying, I'm just trying to find out if you're all right. I, I feel bad. No, I'm not all right. Apparently, everyone's leaving me, and everyone is going to leave me. So why would I be okay? And Tithla turns around and starts to walk away. Tithla, just because things end does not mean people have left you. No, I, I am a satyr. If all goes well here and we get home, I will most likely outlive you by many hundreds of years. It is the nature of our, our biology. So, you, in a sense, you will leave me. Well, that's, that's... I'll never leave you. Exactly. Sometimes it is not within our control. But some people leave because they have to. Some people leave because they are evil, murderous gnomes. Well, I think... For now, I'm I'm gonna leave because, because Dark Lord of the Realm, and they were just fooling us the whole time. Yes, and there is Gunnar, and we will we will find out, dear friend. I'm sure he is just lost, and will be making his way back to us momentarily, and we'll all have a good laugh about the the, the pub he found himself in where he got too drunk, and he'll be completely fine and totally full of blood, and he, it'll be really good. He's he left as well. I didn't think he would. I know that I drove him away. I drove everyone away. I think he long forgave you for, for what you did to him in, in these stockades. I, I think he left to to find, um, I mean, it's not green. Find a better goblin. Pastures. Uh, Tithla, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think Grinner left. I think Grinner was taken. Uh, you think I... Uh, look, there's nothing to say he was taken. I, he, there's an equal chance he just went down to find more cigarettes and, and drink. He did run well, out of cigarettes on the way up uh, to the abbot. The, 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 track, the tracks was, at the top of the mountain would, they, they were weird, right? Like, you, Jono, you, you, you led us up there to take a look at them. You and Killian had a, had a good old look around. and I mean, it looked like he just vanished. So that, to me, tells me yeah, magic was then, involved. We know Grinner couldn't use magic. Almost, went, like, just went to a, straight to a dead end or he just disappeared. Yeah, we we know Grinner can't use magic. Uh, I, I, Tithla, I, I don't I don't think Grinner I don't think Grinner chose to leave. I think Grinner was forced to. So what we need to do as his friends is, is try and find him. Why are you trying to lead us this way? What do you mean? Well, why are you trying to point us in a specific direction? We were doing things. I'm not saying we have to like. Go, I mean, we don't have any leads. Uh, there's no direction I can point us in. We don't know where he is, but I. I I think it's important uh -huh. that we always keep an ear out and an eye out to see what we can learn and see if we can track him down. I mean, okay, you, you you went into the woods and um, Theo chased after you. We, we try and keep ourselves together. What? Why? Why do we try and keep ourselves together? And when is it us? Because we do not want to leave you. And we do not want you to leave us. And it is the choices that define who we are. It is not what we will or or might do. It is what we do do and what we have done. But it's you what you will do, not what you might do. We have always... We've chosen each other. From the time that we set out on our, on our journey, we've always chosen to stay together. Uh, the bonds of our group will 
we'll, we'll keep us there. But what if the group isn't the same? Is this like a ship of Theseus kind of question here, or? So I was gonna no, say, it, like, replace everyone no. in the party with a new person. Is it still the party? <laughs> no, it's more like the farmer and his axe, where he's got his grandfather's axe. That's the shit version the of the ship of Theseus. Just so you know. Yeah, that was that was the joke that I was yeah. trying to make. Owen, yeah. thanks. It's just still the shit <laughs> yeah. See, <laughs> you can tell Tittle's paranoia is really starting to eat at her when she can hear the narration <laughs> starting to actually. If, if you roll a hundred on the D100 madness table, there is an extra special effect, which uh, okay. I was really hoping someone would do. Are you going to roll a madness table right now? I, I, I only, if, it, only if I roll a hundred. Well, there's a one in a hundred chance. So. And if it's a hundred, the hundred kicks in. You roll something. Well, if you roll a D4, it's... Yeah. You get the well, no, I'll roll, I'll roll a D100. And if it's 100, it's 100. And if I, like, it's I like your, I like your 50 50 chance, Jonah. Either matter. I roll 100 or I won't roll 100. It's a 50 50. <laughs> it's a 50 50 oh, chance. I'm 50. Gonna, you roll a 50. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tithla, as you, as you kind of feel yourself unraveling a bit, the paranoia starting to get to you, the, I mean, who can you trust? Sticks? You've only just met Sticks. Sticks is never trusted him. Sticks is undeniably a bit odd, but then Sticks is made out of the, the sentient magic item, the sun sword, the one I thing. I mean, his name is Sticks, and he's made out of metal. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't matter. It doesn't line up. Yeah. Um. Theo has always stuck by you, but has Theo changed? Has his behavior changed at all recently? It's well, yeah. Say. He's never said Theseus before. Yeah. This is, this he's never weird. said Theseus before. Um. Jonor, good friend Theseus to you many times. <laughs> Jonor hasn't been I the same since the Hags. I that that is definitely you know that something's gone on with Jonor. The more he gets into this divination days, magic, at, at the start he was trying to buy me, and now he's saying we're not friends. a good first That's impression. Completely yeah. different. Yeah, Luther. Luther seems weirdly driven. Well, this I mean, whole like holy in quest. And yeah, and this whole like quest that he's on right now. This like holy. I always say the other word, holy <laughs> quest that he's on. Um, <laughs> this sort of seemed to come out of nowhere since the, like this sudden devout following of, of the goddess Lysander. Like, that is bizarre. As you're spiraling a little bit, you suddenly feel uh, a hand on your shoulder. And as you look up, you see Sen, the, uh, the shifter scout that you were uh, really only known for like two hours. Um, she gives Just you- says, are you, are you the axe head or the axe handle? She gives you a big warm smile and goes, um, I like to think of myself as like the whetstone. I, 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 I'm here to, I'm here to like sharpen the ax. Is that a good, does that, does that work with the analogy? I, I, I don't know what the analogy is trying to say. So I don't know. Probably don't get too close to the yes character. <laughs> um, I just, I, I was just going to say, I was just going to say Tithla, um, friends, friends do come and go. What we can do, the only thing we can do, is to make sure that we're we're there for the people that we love, and we make the space for them. Right? Like, you guys. I think you guys are alright. You're pretty cool. I'm not going to be here all the time, but uh, if if you've got room for me to come and jump in every so often, and and when our goals are aligned, I'll I'll come. I'll come. I'll, I'll come. I'll come check up on you guys. But for the moment, like I've got other things I need to do, so I am going to come and go a bit. But I'm still your friend. I still care about you. And she leans down and leans in. If there's if there's maybe something that like maybe some like cool side adventure you and I could do, I'll let you know. Just you and me, not none of the others. Just just the girls, hey? Um No, no, I'm I'm okay, thank you though. No. Goodbye okay. again. Uh I I was I'm not leaving just yet. I was gonna come with you guys back to the winery and Maybe see what you were up to next. Speaking of, now the druids are gone. What is um, your plan? What, what are you guys up to next? Well, I I did um actually want to to thank you. I, I mean I know you all would have done what we did to come down and, and save Zimat the goals regardless, but I realized it was something a bit more personal for me, and I just wanted to thank you all for for having my back when when I needed you all. All right. But I, as to answer your question, Sen, I, I think we'll go back to the Abbey. We have another dear friend um, who has never abandoned or betrayed any of us who we will pick up at the Abbey. And 
and then from there we have another yeah. friend there that we need to protect and we have to find a way to get out of this land hey I, i'm look any escape plans to get out of here i want you to send word to me if i'm not if i'm not nearby if i'm out doing other things i want you to come and find me or, or at least get word to me because i'm whatever you need to get out i'm here i'm i'm in is that so that um, you can for stop us we'll send um no? we'll send the raven. Uh, what yeah yeah send a raven sounds good um i was gonna say i'm i'm i mean you guys are all right too i guess you're pretty capable down there especially you hot stuff she looks at you up and down theo thank you Oh. She, she smiles and pats you on the back to like, yeah, you were great. And then winks at all you right. again, Theo. <laughs> Theo just blushes with all the awkwardness of a guy who spends most of his time alone in, in, the, in the woods. In the woods. <laughs> <laughs> I've got all the charisma of a man who spends his time in the woods <laughs> by himself, hanging out with a goblin, <laughs> talking to trees. Yeah. Um, I just, yeah. I mean, I thought I'd lay some cards on the table. Um, I'm pretty good at scouting areas out. Uh, my skill set, moving quietly, taking notes, observations. I've been taking some pretty detailed notes of the surrounding area. Um, I was going to try and check in uh, up towards the north. There's been some uh, some activity up with the werewolves. If um, I, don't, I don't know if you guys are interested in what's going on around there, but if there's anything I can help with, uh, um, let me know. But my path takes me north. There's, a, there's an item I'm trying to track down that I think might have been taken to a werewolf den. I'm very intrigued about that, but there's also... Have you come across someone called Rictavio before? Rictavio? Oh, it, it, if, you, if you come across a guy with like a giant winter wolf, then you, you, you've you met him. Oh, a giant white wolf? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, El Elven dude, black hair, um, uh, like has like a big crossbow on his back. Uh, massive, massive fucking white wolf. Is this the one? Yeah, yeah, I bumped into him. Oh gosh. Um, let me check my notes. She, what, she pulls out a leather-bound notebook from her at from pack and begins flicking through. You can see those of you who are sort of standing around. Sen has drawn some pretty impressive maps of the surrounding area, um, with little notes in the margins. It looks like the language that she's writing in is some sort of shorthand. It looks like she's taken very detailed notes in this very quick, rapid script, which kind of does make sense for someone who spends their time needing to uh, to take quick notes unseen. Uh, you watch as she pauses, looks back and goes, yeah, um, a couple of nights ago, not too far from Valaki. Uh, he was, uh, I saw the fellow riding out on this massive white wolf. Um, didn't know who he was or what he was up to, so I stayed to the shadows. I didn't didn't introduce myself, um, just sort of kept out of sight, took some notes. Um, it looked like he was headed north, uh, up and around the tower, uh, by the lake, uh, Lake Bartok. I no, we we've already um, been. He's moved on from there. We also went to the tower. No, 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 not not to the tower. It looked like he was going around it. Um, oh. Actually, sorry, you've been to the wizard's tower. What, what was in there? I haven't actually gotten around to there yet. Anything interesting? Um, there was a succubus and a talking head, huh. or a head that we made to be talking. Succubus. I've never encountered a succubus before. What was she like? I do not recommend it. Oh. I thought they were supposed to be very attractive women? All in all, fairly unpleasant encounter. Oh. Oh, that's disappointing. Oh, okay, fair enough. It's kind of awkward for, for a lot of us, really. Oh! And you watch just a knowing smile across their face <laughs> and she slowly nods. As she scans across looking for reactions. Um, I'm going to go by real world blushes. Uh, Joe Nor seems to be blushing the most. <laughs> this. He would have, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> she gives you a little bit of a no, raised eyebrow, know, Joe Nor. Men and women of strong mental fiber and resisted. It was just a, a lot to deal with when in a group of, of friends. But I, I do not recommend it. But the tower is relatively safe now. Um, the head is no longer talking, so... Yeah, sorry, I, I, I completely let that bit with the head go past because I was so focused on sucking. But sorry, you found a talking head, where's... Well, we found the head and... We made it become talking. Oh! Is that... Magic, right? Some sort of magic to... Totally normal. Cool and normal. Huh. I forget how he... There's a, there's a scroll for it, wasn't there? Scroll of Speak With Dead, yeah. Did you copy that into your spellbook journal? 
Nah, it's a cleric spell. Dang. Ah, well. We had yeah. <laughs> ah, well, um, I, did you learn anything fun from the dead head? Um, I actually never came up with that. So, no. <laughs> I, I know, I remember Rictavio had asked the head, I have a note on it, the Rictavio asked the head which Vistani were bad, I don't know what that means, which ones were spies, um, and possibly where the werewolf den was. My notes were some somewhat scrawled here. Do you happen to have a date on when that session was? The How... the tenth. Sorry, not the tenth. This happens to be one of the very few sessions I took notes in. <laughs> Thank God we've got a professional stream with professional players who take this seriously. I wasn't there. That's my excuse for not having notes. Presuming all of that was in fact fair. the head knowledge. Um. I, I suspect uh, he we we found information on on the Vistani, the werewolf den, and the Amber Temple. Amber Temple. Um, I, I haven't checked that place out yet. Um, Do not. I've, everything we've heard suggests it is, might be the last place you go. If if you do uh, go, I suggest you come back and and bring us. Yeah, I might I might let you know when I need to head around that way. There's um, the item I'm heading up to the werewolf den to collect. It's um, it's in two parts. And I, I, I think my research says the other part is in the Amber Temple, but maybe it's best if I don't head there alone. I might. You're trying to collect. Can you? Yeah. Can you make me a persuasion check, please? Bruh. Bruh. It's so forthcoming with the information. Bruh. She doesn't want. She doesn't want to share this. <laughs> Eight. Um. In my mind, it's going to be like the fucking Miles Morales Spider-Man where you like put a hand on a shoulder, you go, so, <laughs> to, get, <laughs> to get the information, hey. <laughs> um, she sort of looks in the eyes and goes, hey. I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, wh wh what do you want to know? Well, do you, well I, I just thought it'd be helpful since you're sharing all about you're going to collect, so if we know anything about it. Um, we could share, and then if we see the other part, we could we could tell you, or you know, oh, open look. discourse of information amongst friends. I was sharing what the head said. You share what you're about to do. You're asking us a lot of questions, and now you tell us what you're doing. Cause yeah, we're look, friends. that look, that's really fair. Um, it's just this item I'm going after. Oh, would okay, Foxtrot who summons this NPC said that Thea would have advantage because Sen is uh, easily persuaded by Thea. In that case, you may have advantage as this is Foxtrot's, as this is Foxtrot's NPC. <laughs> Foxtrot's in charge. Uh, watch it be a natural fucking one. <laughs> 25. <laughs> as, you, as you put the hand on the shoulder, go, hey. <laughs> you watch as Sen's eyes go wide. She sort of like looks deep into your eyes. Sort of for a moment kind of like loses focus a bit as you get this sort of dreamy look across her face her cheeks slightly reddening and then you watch as her uh, wolf like ears sort of flitter and flack and she goes oh um um yeah there's um there's this rumor right and she like leans in close there's this this is rumor right um the 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 mage the the mad mage of mount bartok um he had a, a spell scroll case the the head and the, the the case itself the the cap and the and the body and apparently if you put in blank scrolls you can access some of the magic pull out spell scrolls spells that he knows apparently his his spell book is the case it's enchanted with the spells that he holds in his mind um i'm not a magic person per se i don't really know much magic but i was thinking if i could get a source of of easily sellable items items that could be traded items that could be bartered i might be able to get a bit of an advantage to get out of here and plus if i'm lucky enough maybe some of the magic is stuff that i can cast maybe a spell that could i don't know get me home so i'm looking for the two halves see if i can get the case and the lid yeah, this sounds helpful i mean we have our our friend jono here and our friend killian is also skilled with magic um, if you find the part from the werewolf den and meet up with us, maybe we could go to the Amber Temple and get the other half and 
see what we can do. Perhaps with our, our magic users, we could get um, a bit more value out of that and maybe we could cast some of these spells and, and get out. We've unfortunately seen it go quite um, awry when you try to teleport out of this realm. So what, what, do you mean? Well, what do you mean? Um, what, what happens when you try and teleport out? I was really counting on being able to teleport out. I can't teleport I mean, out? I think the word Jono used, he, he, he described it with his you know, big mage word, words, but he said that... Uh, Close clusterfuck is might have been... Right. Oh, I thought you said disintegrates, but I, I, the cl- clusterfuck is a much better technical term. Oh, God, it's disintegrated. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Clusterfuck, not, 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 inter- not interested. Not interested in that. No, thanks, Jonor. I, I don't want that. Yes, a, a no. young lad disintegrated his maid. Disintegrated his maid? What a prick. To, he did also end up disintegrated himself, so... Yeah, but he already disintegrated the maid. If he was going to disintegrate himself anyway, he should have just done himself first. What a prick. Yo, look, we, we agreed, hence the disintegration. And Wait, that's you... why you don't play with magic? You you can't really handle? Um, yeah, I mean, I was, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna play with magic that I couldn't really handle. You watch as Sen's ears go flat against her head as she sort of shifts about uncomfortably. Um, <clears throat> We should probably get moving. Um, and uh, yeah, when I find these things, I think I'll, I'll, um, I think I'll, I'll, think I'll bring them to you guys, and we can have a chat about that. Hey, that might be best. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do not go to the Abbot Temple alone. I, I think it is quite dangerous from what I have heard. Oh, you, you worried about something happening to me? You, you're a friend now, and I don't think Titla could handle losing yet another friend. That's okay, she's already gonna leave. And we were trying to explain to the dude. A friend doesn't leave so long as the bonds of friendship remain. As long as you have that, the friend is still with you. Okay. If you see that wolf winter and you hurt him, I will hunt you down. Do not why, hurt him. Why would I why would I hurt the why would I hurt the good boy? He I don't know like why a, you would. He seemed like a good boy. Why would I hurt him? I'll find you if you do. And, Tipler is a bit out of sorts. I think she spent too much time with Zeraskip. Um, but yeah, what if you, the fuck was up with that gnome? Can we talk about the gnome? What the fuck was up with that gnome? Oh, he's evil. He killed the whole family and pushed a man down some stairs and broke his neck. Wow, that's um, that's pretty bloodthirsty. I, I'm, I'm not. We, just to talk. we were going to do nothing else. Wow, that's dark. I'm. Um, Tithla, it's probably probably best you're not spending time with that gnome anymore. He seems like a really bad influence. No offense to you. He also polymorphed our friend's child into a gorilla and made her fight druids. Yeah, that was pretty sick. Not gonna lie, that was pretty cool. I mean, that that was a point in his book. No, very impressive. Looked cool. Endangering um child, not so cool. Yeah, yeah, that's probably not great, is it? He probably could have just polymorphed a cockroach or something. What is it with you and cockroaches, mate? Is that nature's most noble creature? No. No, you're, you're thinking of literally any other creature in comparison. Um, where are you from? Is, the, where we are from, the cockroach is revered above all others. She looks around at Jonah and Tithla. Uh, Jonah and Tithla, could I get you uh, to please... I say like, back me up, dudes. <laughs> Jonah and Tithla, do you back him up, dudes? <laughs> There's an audible sigh. Ah. It, it's noble among sorts. That's a blatant lie, Jonah. I'd like a deception check, Tithla. <laughs> I think Tithla is just running scenarios in her head. Who's the traitor? Yeah, maybe the cockroach is the hero. Maybe. <laughs> Who got- Six, Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> Jonah, as you, as you say, the cockroach is a noble creature. You look down, see one, and quickly squash it <laughs> around, the, around the dirt. As Sen, sort of starting to believe you, looks down and watches you squash a cockroach. As you look up and make eye contact with her, she's just looking at you with her eyes up. Different cockroaches back over here from Zim. That is a, a common, filthy cockroach. The ones ones back in Nostea are, are majestic. Very different. 
I get like a golden like dust pan, uh, dust brush, just to brush off the cockroach and just fling it onto the ground nearby with a cast of prestidigitation. Yeah, it looks like you treat them with great respect. I'm, I'm sure what your problem is. There are people that lack culture in in every realm. Yeah, we call them roaches. You know, looks incredibly <laughs> appalled. <laughs> Sizzler mutters to herself. That that is something Jonah would have done. Maybe it's not him. I'd say at this point, Luther sort of coughs and goes, <clears throat> "We should we should probably get walking to this hillside. We're just exposed here. We've been throwing around some some things. I mean, we've all we've mentioned a name we probably shouldn't have mentioned. I just realised before. And we've also talked about where we're from. Uh, no offence, Sen, but we just don't know 100 percent who we can trust here. And uh, probably best exactly. if we start." Yeah, Th- thanks, Tithla, for the for the for the backup. Uh huh. <laughs> why are you looking at me like that? Go on. Uh, I was I was just gonna Keep say talking. It's, uh, I was just gonna say it's probably best if we make our way to the winery. I mean, Davian and, and Elvia flew on ahead with Lara and Stefania. I just want to make sure they're okay. I mean, I'd hate to think that we missed one or two of the druids and they're they're back there planning some other so some sort of ambush or something. I just want to make sure they're okay. Would you like to ride on my back in, in bear form on Zueza? Would that make S- you happier? Sen starts nodding. Yeah, I'd love to. And then she sees it. Ah. Oh. Well, that's fine. Sorry, you said Tithla. Do you usually uh, like to ride on my, on, on my back? Um. Yeah, yeah. That's what I would normally do. I'll keep doing that. Yeah. Tithy, you sit in front, and I can, I can like, you look a bit tense. Do you want to, do you need like a little? You know like what? A, if if there's happy, I'm happy to walk this one time. If he's, no, 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 if it's okay. Wants, wants no, no, I, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. No, 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 you. I, I don't know if I can carry carry both of you, but easily. Okay. okay. But Tithy, please climb on. It'll it'll be good. Okay then. Perfect. Tithla slowly climbs. Back. Um, really. Drags Drakeb up, <laughs> which is different. She doesn't normally have Drakeb up with her. Drakeb's reasonably big now, right? Uh, well, big enough for you to ride Drakeb. No, that's next level. Next level. Yeah, that'll be sick. Um, you oh, won't need on. Theo anymore. Yeah. We'll always need Theo. But not for the next two days. <laughs> Get back at the cave. As, as you make your way towards the Wizard of Wines vineyard, um, we're going to jump back with Killian. Killian, you have a lovely long rest. It's quiet and calm. The air inside the, the abbey, you hadn't noticed it before, but it smells sweeter now. It smells fresher. There's a warmth as well inside this protective dome. It feels almost like you're standing in in warm sunlight whenever you're outside under the under the roof of this dome, under the light of this magic. It is making you a little bit homesick, to be honest, a little bit nostalgic for your for your home. But as you awaken the next morning, have breakfast with um with Irina and with the uh, with the mongrel folk, um, as well with Nikolai and Stella Wachter, um, you can see uh, as you, as you finish your breakfast, the abbot strides over, um, a bit of a smile on his face as he pulls out a leather bound tome. Um, but rather than addressing you, he turns towards Nikolai and Stella. Stella is still acting like a cat, still sort of like licking her ears, doing the whole sort of like cat like behaviour with her front feet. It's like acting them like treating them like paws, occasionally hissing when a Mongol folk with any sort of dog like features or canine features gets too close. Nikolai sort of having to calm her down and get her back into bed. Uh, as the abbot strides closer, he nods and looks to Nikolai. Nikolai, um, I have been putting off your sister's treatment for far too long. Um, I just wanted to let you know that today I'm going to be spending uh, all of my energy in helping to uh, to break through this this. Uh, affliction on your sister's mind if you would uh, bring her with me to my study I have uh, removed the, the 
cursed stains of my past to make it a safe space for healing once again. Uh, if you would please bring her with you. Um, we're going to try. Uh, a method that I uh, I developed much uh, many years ago before the corruption of this place took me. Uh, and I think it will be quite effective in helping to, uh, to ease your sister's troubles. Uh, Killian, uh, Irina, I will be... Uh, I'll be in the study uh, all day today and uh, possibly for the next uh, two days as well. If there's anything you need from me, uh, let me know now. Otherwise, I will be uh, devoting all of my time to healing uh, healing this poor woman's broken mind. Um, I'm going to be leaving soon with to take Adrian back to the Wizard of Wines. Uh, he's eager to get back there to see if his family's okay. So I'm oh, going to yeah. head with him if if that's okay for me to leave. Yeah, of course, now that we have the uh, protection dome, the uh, the, the energy, uh, the V will protect this place uh, far better than um, than any of our energies could. It will protect us day and night, and uh, as long as I renew the magic every seven days, this place will be uh, <laughs> nigh impenetrable. No, please, uh, thank you. You have done more than enough, Gillian. Uh, Irina, you will be is, is... obviously safe here, sanctuary for you as long as you need, and um, I hope that uh, I hope that you treat this place as a a sanctuary for you as well, as a, as a, a base for you to operate out of, a place of safety in these dark lands. No, Killian, please, go rejoin your friends. I am uh, sure you must be anxious. And um, when you see Jonah and Lusa again, please, uh, please thank them for me, for giving me my mind back, for giving me my, well, my soul back. I am myself again. I will. Is there anything that you want us to do while we're out there, anything you said before that you wanted to begin looking for a way to get all of us out of here, is there anything in the land outside of the Abbey that we could bring to you that could help facilitate that, or...? Yeah, there are, there are two things we need more than anything else right now. We need information and we need allies. There are two things that we are lacking at this point. Uh, my records, notes that I have taken during these years here, uh, of a um, very focused nature, that of a twisted mind. They are not helpful for what we need to take down these dark powers. No, we we need uh, we need intelligence on the land, and we need allies. We need to know who we can trust, and ideally, we need to gather them here, outside the uh, the influence and the uh, the effect of the, this dark place. After that, we need to start putting together teams. I want to have two or three teams. Uh, a primary strike team, which I was thinking you and your companions could lead and be part of, uh, a group to go out and to to uh, launch assaults on places that need uh, need to be taken down. There are many dangers here that pose a risk. I think it is more than just getting out of here. Luther's words have uh, have had a profound effect on me. I want want to not just I don't just want to escape anymore. I want to heal this place. I want to make it whole again. I want to bring the light back to Borovia. I want Lysander's light to shine upon these lands again, and that means getting rid of Sergei and Strahd. I've said it. Is I'm there... committed. Is it what I want? Is there any way for you to spread your light from here? At the moment, no. I am I'm limited. You must understand. This place is... Uh, no. Imagine a... Um, a vortex of mist and darkness constantly swirling, and at its core are two powerful conduits of magic, of dark energies, Strad and Sergei. Uh, since my mind has been cleared, uh, I have been able to sense more about this place, the magic that fuels them. This is probably a conversation for, for the rest of the group as well, and I would appreciate the input of someone more knowledgeable in the, uh, the aspects of the arcane um, we also need some people who uh, understand the, the land and the natural magics that inhabit it, because at its core, this is what has been done here, corruption of the natural magics. Uh, I think this is a conversation best for, for when they are here. Then we can hypothesize, come up with uh, plans on how this is, understandings. But if you can, when you meet up with the rest of the group, if you can uh, let them know that we need allies and information. That's what we need. Okay, can, can certainly do that. I know we've got some allies in Velaki and maybe the Vistani with Madame Eva might. Yeah, the Vistani might are be tricky our allies. Lot. Some of them. It's going to be hard to know who we can trust within the Vistani. I, 
Madame Eva, I... There's something there. My memory is fragmented in places. But whenever I hear her name, whenever I think of her, there is a... Uh, a sense of dread. I do not yet know if we can trust her. Something, there's something about her, something I... I'm sorry, I can't quite put my... Uh, Maybe if your memories are still frag fragmented, maybe if when the rest of us, once I meet up with the others and we all come back here, maybe maybe Jonor could help with that. I know Jonor's very good at looking into the minds of others. Yes, it's a, it is a sound idea. Um, ironically now, I must uh, take care of the mind of this poor woman. Uh, her broken mind is my priority today, but... Maybe my own should be, uh, be the next priority for me. But before you leave, before you yeah. leave to to help Stefania out, um, Stella, Stella, sorry, names. Uh, it's, um, it, to be fair, to be fair, two young female side characters, both with the starting stare. <laughs> it's, yeah. that's pretty harsh. <laughs> that's a little uh, bit, especially in like when the modules happen one after another or right next to each other. That is that is rough. Hmm. With, with me preparing to go and meet up with the others, I'm going to uh, gear up. I'll kit out Adrian as well. You wouldn't happen to have a diamond around, would you? That I could, uh, that I could take with me. A diamond. Um, Killian, could you please roll me a D100? Let us see if the Abbot knows of uh, a diamond that you could have. I'm guessing a diamond worth 100 GP. 100 GP, yes, please. 500 GP? 77? Let me, 77. Let me just check. I think it's 100 GP at the top of my head. But then I've got this weird feeling it's 500. For um, 300. 300 GP. Neither mm. options I said, but somehow halfway in the middle. Um, yeah. As uh, <laughs> 77. You watch as the abbot sort of like concentrates for a moment and then nods very slowly. Yeah, actually... I, I I may have a diamond that you can have. Um, it is uh, it is a centerpiece of an old uh, symbol of the sun. Um, it's it's not a not a holy symbol uh, to focus magics through or anything like that. But um, it was a precious item. Uh, I believe it was the the holy symbol of Saint Markovia, the um, the patron saint of this chapel. But May I ask what you want to use this for? What is it? Uh, what do you need this diamond for? There's a particular spell that I'm able to cast through the light that Luther and Jonal showed me, as well as yourself, uh, that would aid my allies if any of them were to fall. I can, I can only do it once, but a get out of jail free card would be very helpful. No, that is. Um... It is a more than fair request. Uh, give me a moment. I will be right back with it. Uh, I will give you the holy symbol itself. Uh, the diamond is, to, is but the centerpiece, but if it is used as a conduit for magic, the diamond will, will crumble, leaving you with the gold holy piece. Um, if, if that is useful for you in any way, otherwise, if you are able to extract the diamond, you may keep or sell the holy symbol, whatever you wish. Uh, give me a moment. I'll be right back with it. Uh, and with that, the abbot heads downstairs, and then, true to his word, Five ten minutes later, Jonah, not Jonah, Killian <laughs> comes back up. Jonah, where'd you come from? <laughs> Jonah. <laughs> Jonah's like, I heard diamond. <laughs> um, Killian, the abbot reemerges and hands you a symbol. Um, it is a circular symbol, a disc, uh, roughly about sort of twenty centimeters wide, symbol of the sun, and in its center, a beautifully cut and polished diamond, um, almost catching the light's rays as you hold it and look at it, and the way it's been cut, the facets, the faces, almost divert the light out onto the rays of sunlight, creating this almost like kaleidoscope of lights around the disc. As he hands it over, passes it to you, he goes, on one hand, I hope that this holy symbol is enough to bring you the, the blessings of Lysander. On the other, as you say, if one of your allies were to fall, I hope that this brings them back. I hope that this prevents, uh, present, prevents their... Uh, untimely demise thank you go with the blessings of Lysander I uh 
I have much to do. Promises to uphold, oaths to keep. But, um... Once I am done with Stella, once you are back here, we can, can consider our next moves. Have you got a way to communicate with us once once we leave? Can you uh, use the spell sending? I can. I, that's the I can. I can speak uh, across great distances, but I have this. There was a note that I found amongst my journals uh, early on. I spoke of uh, presence listening in on magical communications. I am... Um, I'm not sure that, uh, that these are secure in Borovia. Sending message. Sending. I'm not sure these work as well. Uh, I think... We'll have to come up with a secure way to communicate with each other. That is the next thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, that is the next thing. We will need to try and sort out. Right. Maybe some ravens that we've recently met. Josh says out of character. Um, Who I don't, right. I, I will take Adrian back to the Wizards, wine, yeah. wizards of Wines and um, meet up with the others. Thank you very much. I mean, for Jonor, Tithler, and Theo and Luther, um, the, the thought of using were ravens as messenger as messengers makes perfect sense because in in Nostea you have the Arakokra and Owlin messenger guilds during the ruin when the the gods fought each other and magic was wild and untamed the only way that messages could be passed between the uh, the prime deities and the forces of, of stability and good was through the Arakokra because magic couldn't be trusted magic would go wild messages would go anywhere sometimes if you did the spell sending it would send the message into the past or into the future it was you couldn't trust magic in that way anymore because it was so chaotic so the Arakokra messenger guild is now one of the most powerful organizations on this controlling the flow of information across multiple continents multiple different races um so yeah where ravens is like perfectly logical next step for uh for anyone from Nostea. it's like yeah yeah just just find some birds guys we need some bird people get some bird people up in here and that's how we pass messages are there pigeon arapocras yeah 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 so so there's i i haven't i haven't drawn this yet but i've been working on a whole slew i've um i've started some draft sketches of australian arapocra including the sacred ibis arapocra <laughs> the galah arapocra and the um the rainbow lorikeet Arakoka, the crested pigeon Arakoka. But every time they fly, it's like <laughs> they make the noise as they fly. For anyone who doesn't live in Australia, that would have been a very weird thing. We have a species of bird here called the crested pigeon that every time it flies, literally makes this noise as it flies. <laughs> and I know that sounds like I'm making. The stream, believe oh, good. Not. Okay, I, I know it sounds like I'm making that shit up, but I swear to God, it's real. If you look up crested pigeon on YouTube, I'm sure someone's filmed it because it's the funniest fucking noise. Um, I think every other nationality has trust issues with Australians telling them about their native animals. Yeah. Oh, I 100% oh. do after the bloody drop bear thing. <laughs> hey, that wasn't even us. <laughs> no, okay, thing. it was us a bit. You mean the it's drop bear? Yeah. Wait till we tell them about the yowies. Um, <laughs> no, oh, but for least... real though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if people wanted to know more about uh, the lore of Nostaya and the, the world that you've created, is there a place that people could find out more about that? Jacob, you son of a gun. You know there is. Uh, why are you playing coy? <laughs> they can find it on the Wikipedia. The oh, wiki. Oh. The uh, which is which is in the in the description below. You may find the wiki at any point. Um, visit your local. Do you wiki. mean the lost archives fandom.com? That's it. The lost archives fandom.com. And may I say, there have recently been some incredible updates. Uh, in particular, one of our lovely community members, uh, Tabs, has been working hard. To, uh, to update that wiki with uh, a lot of the Curse of Strahd stuff. So the, the current state, particularly of the Curse of Strahd wiki, uh, in its current beautiful format, we may we may thank Tabs for that. She has done an incredible job keeping that up to date. So, yes. We are I have a happy. challenge for Tabs, and yeah. I'm going to search myself and see if there is a reference Aramis. A reference to what, sorry? Anyone else? Aramis. A-R-A-M-A-S. Member of Strahd's court. There's a little tab. Didn't he greet us when we first arrived? We got along through there. Wasn't Aramis the one that we fought in Velaki? The one with the Aramis was the vampire you fought in Velaki. The one you're thinking of mm. is Rahad and Jono. Uh, my mistake. Both dickheads. That's all good. Ah. Both dickheads. That is a fact. If you, if you look under the dickheads tab of the wiki, you will see both their names listed there and then Raspip in all caps. 
it's just at the bottom. King of the Dickens. <laughs> yeah. Dickens King, also stands King of for the NPCs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> King, King of the Dingus is Rasput right there. Um, <laughs> with that little aside, Killian, as you collect, um, as you collect, uh, I've just had a complete mental breakdown on Adrian's name, but it's back now. As you collect Adrian, um, take him down to the armory, get him some uh, some better armor, some leather armor to wear over the top of his clothes. It's pretty misfitting just because it's mostly been designed for use with asymmetric um, mongrel folk. But uh, with a bit of adjusting, you get the straps on properly and he's got a little bit of protection. As the two of you make your way towards the Wizard of Wines Vineyard, you pass through the town of Kresk. It's pretty early morning as you guys pass through, having having woken up quite early to, to get out and away. Um, the town only just starting to get up and running. You pass through without too much interference. The guards giving you a wary look, Killian. Yeah. Is the sheriff around anywhere? <sighs> he would be, yes. <laughs> as you get up towards the gates, <laughs> you can see um, the sheriff uh, standing, uh, probably lounging is a better term, lounging against the gates, resting on his spear, um, head slightly bowed as if sleeping, but you can see his eyes peering out from underneath his guard's cap as he, as he examines the surrounding area, keeping a, a watchful eye on the roads. Morning, Sheriff. Morning. You lot it's of back, uh, are you? Where did more of yes. you last time you were here? Uh, some of them left a bit early. You must have, must have missed them on your watch. Are you saying I did not pay adequate attention? Nothing slips by my eyes, boy. That is fair. Uh, the no Abbey... No bovine, if, uh, no ursine, no servine, and certainly no people. Okay, I'll, I'll have to look in a different direction for them then. Uh, the, the Abbey, if anybody needs any healing or anything, or if you want to go up there for any reason, it, it is welcoming... The abbey is the abbot is um crazy. No, he is sane. He is normal. He is accepting. Mm. I'm sorry. Are we talking about the same person? Bald head, creepy demeanor, eyes watching like they're dissecting you as he peers at you, undressing that's you. How he, that's Not how just with your be. clothes, but with your skin as well. Right unsettling. He's He's not like that anymore. If any of the people here need healing, please do take them up there. What did you do? He gives you a bit of a suspicious glance, Killian. Healed him, and then I carry on walking. Could you make me a persuasion check, please, Killian, to see if you have convinced uh, the sheriff of that information? Yes. Persuasion. Persuasion. That is a 19. 19. He watches, he slowly nods, curious, but not wanting to show any level of, uh, of interest in what you're saying too, uh, too obviously, but he sort of nods considering your words and gives you a bit of a nod as you pass away. As you, as you have. Sorry, I just want to hear him talk, so I'm going to carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember his name. It was Sergeant um... Gavel. Gavel, thank you. Mm-hmm. How could you forget Sergeant him? He's the only NPC we've liked. Oi! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Sergeant Gavel. He's the only Gavel. one that had any depth as a character. He's the only one that had any depth as a character. He was one joke. The joke was uh, no bovine <laughs> or sad or lupine. <laughs> that was the joke. But I'm pleased and that that really resonated. joke. You. I added in an extra one today, Servine, to describe any deer that might have snuck past. I thought that'd be a fun little addition. Uh, perfect. See, it's that kind of depth and character creation that we've come to know and love from Sergeant you, Gavel. Really, you can only get here at the Lost Archives. Um, <laughs> Killian, as you make your way towards the Wizard of Wine's Vineyard uh, with Adrian, it's probably getting closer to mid-afternoon by the time you arrive having passed without really any issues uh, through some of the uh, the areas that can be a bit more dangerous. The bridge that you cross, I mean, you know that there have been sightings of, of wolves and other monsters nearby, but nothing seems to accost you on your journey. And as you get towards the bottom of the Wizard of Wines Vineyard, you see a large 
black carriage. Four horses tied up, sitting just outside the main entrance, the pathway leading up towards the uh, the vineyard, clear. And you can hear voices echoing through the valley, down the hill from the top of the Wizard of Wine's vineyard, and the occasional soft laughter as you sort of look. Adrian looks at the carriage, looks at you, and then looks back at the carriage and goes, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting them to have guests here. Um, I don't, uh, should we, should we check everything's all right? I mean, do you think, do you think they're okay? I proceed with caution. I don't recognize this carriage and as much as, as resourceful as our friends are, I, I, I don't think they would have been able to have gotten one of these between here and between Kresk and yesterday um here because i don't know they went to yesterday hill between there and here yeah let's yeah um okay i'll, I'll lead you up there's a there's a, a pathway back through the edge of the vines we can we can come up around the back and, and stay a bit stay a bit safer maybe okay, sneak up on them if it's someone perfect and with that adrian leads you around the back of the uh, back of the vineyard and up towards the uh, the main warehouse coming up behind it as you emerge uh, around the back of the vineyard. Killian, the laughter and, and sounds coming from the, uh, essentially the beer garden, the uh, the uh, restaurant and, and drinking hall at the front of the, um, at the front of the winery. You can hear the sound of glasses occasionally clinking, the occasional pop of a cork. It sounds for all the world like there's some sort of party going on out the front of the vineyard. Adrian sort of looks around and goes, do you think, do you think maybe they're, they're all okay and they're celebrating? Maybe. They could be, but I'd still be cautious. I'm, yeah. I, I, it just sounds like it's all, it sounds like it's all okay. I don't, I don't recognize. And then as he says that, you hear the sound of footsteps and emerging into the warehouse, you see Davian. Killian, the last time you saw Davian, he was looking, I would say, tired, looking a bit drained. He looks way worse now. You can see cuts on his arms and face that have been covered with sort of uh, little bits of, uh, looks like some sort of like adhesive to help keep them uh, held together, um, bandages with a bit of glue. You can see that he's... Um, quite pale dark rings under his eyes but as soon as he sees his son the biggest smile lights up his face and he rushes forward and grabs adrian and pulls him into a hug you hear from adrian oh, dad dad it's okay i'm really happy to see you too dad as davian grabs his son and holds him in like a bear hold hug um as he looks up at you tears sort of dotting his eyes he just smiles and goes Thank you for bringing my son home. Oh, it is it is so good to see you, uh, Killian. Um, we um we have some guests here. As he slowly lets Adrian go, rustles his hair. Um, we have some guests here. I I um I think they are. Um, don't don't be too alarmed. They I, they they seem like they are not wanting any trouble. I um I was just coming in to get some more wine, but um. If, uh, if you wouldn't mind maybe keeping an eye on them, I just want to make sure that, uh, you'll see. Come, come with me. I'll show you. Any, anything to be concerned about? I'm not sure. They seem to be celebrating something. Uh, women, uh, five of them, very pale, all dressed in layers of black and white, um, drinking lots of wine they they paid in advance a lot of gold um in fact adrian I, I, could you actually take their horses and, and take them to the stables uh son that would be that would be a huge help if you could um yeah dad sure um yeah I, i'll be right back I, I, I can i can deal with the horses good um and killian uh, if you just want to sit nearby, maybe over here. I, I don't think they they want any trouble, but um, I just want to be sure, you know. 
just got my family and my vineyard back. Uh, Lara um, headed straight uh, downstairs and gives you a nod and then pauses as he realizes you have no idea what he's referring to as you weren't there <laughs> I don't for know that. Who Dara is either. <laughs> yeah, he just sort of pauses, realizes that, and goes, Story for another time. Um, uh, my sister, Lara, is here. Um, I'll introduce you to her later, but for now, she she's she can't come up. These people have arrived, and we're trying to keep these quiet. But if, if I sit you down at one of the tables, bring you some wine, bring you some some bread, some cheeses, some, some cured meats, could you maybe work your charms and find out if there's any any danger here? And um, the signal, uh, ask for a dry white if there's anything to be concerned about. Would you okay. order a dry yeah. white normally? No, not normally. Great. Okay. Perfect. Good signal then. Okay. Right. The description that he's given is yeah. a cause for concern. So as we round yeah. the corner and I can see them, I'm going to use Eyes of the Grave. Ah, Eyes of the Grave, which lets you see undead, correct? Yes. You know that the location of any undead within 60 feet of you that isn't behind total cover and isn't protected from divination magic until the end of your next turn. You can use this feature. I can use it twice. Yeah. Um, sitting at the table are five vampires. Uh, <laughs> five undead. Um, currently sitting around enjoying wine. Um, they all look to be... Uh, they, they are all women. They all look to be in their... Um, I'd say anywhere between 20s to, to mid-30s, um, quite an age range, all dressed in very similar uh, black and white clothing, except for one of them who's dressed in full white, um, giving her almost this kind of like ghostly appearance, matching her quite pale white skin. Um, the others also all have these hoods and slight veils, um, but the, um, the fifth one does not. She has... Uh, what looks like this long flowing white dress and then a white, I'd almost say like a linen jacket wrapped around um, with the collar sort of pulled up, giving her this uh, almost a little bit of like a kind of like half punk look, I guess would be the best way to describe it. Long um, honey blonde hair, um, almost a little bit sort of like elven features. Um, and she's currently smiling and laughing along with them as she drinks uh from a very large glass of uh, blood red wine. Walk they the they pay you no attention as you walk up, um, following it's, along. Yeah. It, is Davian putting me on a separate table or introducing me to these people? Davian does not introduce you. As Davian walks up, he um, he just smiles and nods at the ladies um, who, as he approaches, uh, you watch as the, uh, the one without the veil and without the hood smiles and goes, Ah... Uh, Davian, if we could have another carafe, please, of the, uh, this, this Shiraz vintage. It's divine. Do you have any more? And he nods and goes, um, yeah, uh, let me just see to my other guest. I'll be right with you. And as, uh, as you walk past, you watch as all at once, all five heads turn to look at you and assess you like a cat might assess a baby bird <laughs> has fallen from the nest in front of it. This slow look up and down. And you watch as the uh, the fifth the fifth vampire sort of leans forward, looks over her glass at you and smiles. Oh. Uh, uh, Hello. Uh, uh, as Davian walks past to go get their order, I'll just say, oh, I'm um, sorry. Uh, while, while you're... Uh, dealing with their order. Would you mind? Uh, I would love some cheese and a dry white, please. <laughs> Davian, Davian sort of like immediately eyes go wide and goes, ah, uh, nods, gulps, and then the house inside. collapse. Uh, only there part, only. Everywhere? Was that sorry? I don't like druid corpses everywhere. Uh, no, Raspip and Sticks gathered them up and burned them. That is right. Don't yes. rope me into that. Sticks helped. I thought the roof collapsed. Uh, roof part collapsed. of part of the roof. Did, part of the roof did collapse. Um, yeah. So so Luther and Jonor, actually mostly Jonor, Shadow worked on trying to fix that. Yeah. You can see that there there is signs that the roof has not been fully repaired, Killian. As as you look, it's not the full roof. It's just the corner roof, um, at the opposite end of the house to what's here. So it's not it's not near this outdoor restaurant area. It's at the other okay. corner of the house. So you haven't really walked past there. But yeah, I mean. As you look over, you can see clearly some shit's happened here. There's a number of vines that have been burned away. You can see there's almost like a crater where someone clearly detonated a whole bunch of fire. Um, 
there's a massive trunk of a tree splintered in the very front of the driveway, which is probably why the carriage hasn't come up to this top section, why they've had to leave it down the bottom. Um, and a section of the roof you can see has been propped up with two massive sections of this splintered trunk. Um, rather ironically for Styx, Jonah, Tithra and Theo, um, they've used the corpse of Winter Splinter to reprop up the roof again because it's a big tree. <laughs> um, but yeah, Killian, you can see clearly some stuff's gone down here, but it's looking a bit better than it was. Uh, as did you, uh, did you say that they said anything to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As as uh, as as you as you ask for the dry white, um, you watch as the uh, the fifth vampire, the um, the blonde woman. The rest all have very much darker features, darker eyebrows, darker hair. As she smiles at you and looks over the top of her Shiraz, as you order a dry white, she clicks her tongue and goes, "Ah, oh, no, no reds." Shiraz, this vintage is particularly good. If you wanted a glass, I would be more than happy to pour one. We we are getting some more after all, and we have plenty here to share. Come, you do not need to sit separate. Uh, it is a joyous occasion. We are here partying, and um, I do not think my future husband would mind if we spent some of our time in the presence of a, a rather attractive young man. You hear a sort of oh. flutter of laughs from all around. You certainly honor me with your with your words uh i a uh, uh, dry white is my usual go-to but i will certainly partake in some shiraz it's been a long time since i've had any and as i sort of pull up a chair and sit down with them i noticed the rather exquisite carriage down by the road i would take it that is yours uh there's a bit of a, a titter of laughter around you um and you hear she wishes from one of the other uh, one of the other women seated at the table. You watch as the uh, the fifth vampire turns towards her with a withering glare. It may as well be. It is my uh, future husband's one of his many carriages. And I am lucky enough to be uh, borrowing it and its driver for the evening. It is, it is a very nice uh, piece of craftsmanship, and the horses are exquisite uh, breed. It is a very. Um, may I ask um, who your betrothed is? Is is that is that too personal a question to ask? Or Killian, we're going to jump back with the others because that is a uh, a really good question, and I want them <laughs> to be here for this because it's at I this moment not. as you ask that question, Theo, Tithla, Styx, and Jonor. Uh, and Luther, the four of you have arrived at the bottom of the uh, of the vineyard, having been. Sorry, before back. we arrive, can I Sorry. ask one question yeah, to man. the uh, I'm bad with names, but the the other Sen. No, the uh, Sen. No, do we have? Is it Sen. just Sen. us? Sticks, Joan, or Tithla, Theo, Luther, Sen. Ah, oh, there's none of the ravens here. Right? They flew no, on ahead. <laughs> yeah. Send them off because we're having a few. I figured they'd seen enough corpses for a bit. Hmm. All right, never mind then. Never mind. Apologies. Okay. It was for them specifically. Oh, but I mean, I can. You can still think it, which means what? I know it. <laughs> well, <okay>. so <laughs> if I had a memory sparked, yeah. I went back through my notes when we yeah. were talking about it, and there was a large dead raven um, that was killed by Esmeralda. Tithel wanted to ask if when if they happen to die whilst in raven form would they automatically transform back yeah or, that's a good question like, yeah that hence hence why she wanted to ask yeah. it but that's a real shame you can't get the yeah. answer because they're not there it's a crying shame eh damn that's a shame <laughs> oh, maybe next time mate. Eh? <laughs> chad have just called me a smug little nugget <laughs> that's probably fair that's not a, that's not a it's not an untrue assessment of me right now <laughs> It's, That's putting it nicely, um, I'd say. No, nah, yeah, look, if anything, if anything too generous. Um smug you piece of shit's normally how I've heard it referred to. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> it's at this moment, as uh, as Killian is starting to chat with the um put that on a t-shirt, <laughs> as Killian is chatting with these five lovely ladies that um sticks Joan or Tithla Theo and Luther, you arrive at the bottom of the uh the vineyard. And indeed you can see this carriage. Beautiful, black, all black, and Unhitching the horses is Adrian. As soon as he sees you, massive smile across his face as he runs up and gives Theo a high five, Jonah a high five, 
Tithla, he does the little little handshake that you and he came up with, the fist bump and then pull the fingers back. And then as he looks up at Sticks, he just nods at Sticks. <laughs> Sticks just stares back. He sort of shrinks underneath the purple <laughs> gaze of Sticks and then turns back to Tithla and goes, Guys, so good to see you. How are you guys doing? That's wonderful. We're so happy you're safe and down here. Did, did Everyone's going to leave us eventually. Okay, uh, she's some. Yeah, she's um a bit uh blue. Um, um yeah, Killian's green. Killian's here. Killian, Killian, uh, Killian, and I just got back. Um, he's up the top talking to Dad. There's some fancy guests paying lots of money. So maybe, I mean, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to get too excited, but like maybe our fortunes have reversed now that the druids are gone. Hopefully, it's a quick turnaround. Um. When we left this place was in something of a state, um, you might the goals work quickly. Um, just yeah. that, you, you, you were talking about wanting to have a question for the Were Ravens when we were on our journey over, or...? Ah, uh, there, there's no rush. Nothing well, important. Did, but so, do we, we always value the things you have to say? Okay, well, I wasn't going to be talking about specific people and groups in front of company that we don't know. Perhaps you're just trying to get more information out of me. No, I'm just trying to bring you out of your shell and remain concerned. I've never seen you so quiet. Usually you are... Um... Do you want me to be loud? I can be loud! Adrian, like, Journal covers shutters. His... <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. Passion. laughs> you watch as Sen's wolf ears pull back and she, like, growls a little bit under her breath before sort of getting control of herself. <laughs> is, it, is this okay? We don't even know you! We did. We spent as much time with her as we have with the Raspin. He came back, and then he and left, left again, and it worse. Look, him leaving the first time, if you recall, was a blessing. We were all very happy about this. I wasn't. I was crying under a house, shivering. For, it's not because the Raspin left, but because he murdered a whole heap of people in front of you, and you felt guilty about it. I only saw one of those. Apparently, the rest of it happened. I wasn't there. Exactly. So, you need to remember these parts about Zeraz, but he is quite evil. But regardless, we've, we'll cover this ground. Shall we head up and see Killian? I'm anxious to see him again. When we left, he was still a bit uh, beaten up. Uh, no, he's, looking, he's, he's looking good. Wait, he's, he, the, the abbot healed wait, him up. He's looking let great. Me go talk to him. I need to go. And she runs off to go and talk to Killian. Tithla. As you run ahead and rush up towards Killian, you see Killian sitting at a table with five women. Again, dressed in black and white, as I described before. Um, Currently drinking red wine, these three large carafes, uh, two empty, one half full, sitting on the table in front of them. Uh, Killian's looking, would it be fair to say Killian a little bit unsure? Uh, Very, very unsure, trying to uh, mask it. Yeah. As much as he can. Uh, do you want to make me, I'm going to say, a performance or persuasion check? I want to see how well you're masking this. And uh, we've had, um, for those of you who, uh, who are guessing, yes, this is indeed a community summoned NPC from Tabs, the uh, the lady, the entourage she is with, I have added for fun. Um, and Tabs has uh, followed up with a gift of advantage for her own NPC, which is a baller move. <laughs> so, <laughs> which well I respect. Played. Well played. <laughs> I like that. 19 on Persuasion. Killian, cool as a fucking No, I rolled cucumber. natural one for a five. Oh, for dear. performance. Killian, uh, natural one. You're sweating bullets. It's not going well as uh, as you look at the ladies and they go like, would you like some wine? You go, uh, I don't need any vine. Wine. Wine. <laughs> as you really start I'm, to I'm, lose your shit. I, I'm good. Thank you. And a sense of relief will come over me as soon as I see Tifla. Tifla, as you rush up, Killian looks really uncomfortable. Really uncomfortable. And he's surrounded by these beautiful women. Maybe he's a bit shy. He needs his wing goblin. What are you doing? Oh, Tifla, it's good to see you. Um, are you okay? Everything all right? Uh, this is my what? friend Tifla. Hello, Tifla. 
Lovely to meet you. Uh, we have not exchanged names yet. I am Katarina. Lovely to meet you. And this is my uh, entourage. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know you. No, that we have just met. This is our first time meeting. Uh-huh. Kill him. Why are you talking to new people? Oh, uh, they were here uh, partaking in some of Davian's wine, and they invited me to join their table, so I thought it would be rude of me not to, so I um, decided to... When have you ever um, cared about being rude? Harsh, but fair. Um, I'm trying to turn over a new leaf. Oh my god, I didn't think it would extend to you as well. You weren't even there. I'd say at this point, Theo, Joan, or Styx, you guys catch up. And then Tithla turns around and like like backs away slowly. Killian, it's good to see you. Who is who are your um your brother? Did not I didn't expect to see you here, let alone in the the company of a, a group of of, of women? It's Theo. Unex, unexpected for a as, uh, for a man of your, such devotion. A man of the cloth such as yourself. <laughs> as um as as Katarina turns to you and smiles, she goes Katarina, ladies? And you are. I am Theodore Ursa, and this is this is Jonah, Styx, Titler, and our friend Sen. Hello. And, and, and um. Luther. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luther just uh, uh, Luther goes and, the other uh, and one. I'm yeah, him. and I'm I'm Luther. And, like tips his hat. Pleasure to make your acquaintance, with it, ladies. Yeah. I what? figured you just wanted to talk. He has a his dulcet tones are, are so wonderful to hear. Adventurers, ladies, ladies, adventurers, please, I, this is a, a joyous occasion, a festivity, please come and join us, we are just about to start a lovely night of drinking and debauchery, and we were hoping we might run into some handsome devils such as yourselves. But well, I'm always up for a revel. Indeed, a revel. I think a revel sounds like just what we need. Wouldn't you agree, ladies? It's a chorus of, uh, of nods and eyes. Well, I, I must admit, yeah. you're tiny, quite fortunate. Well, no, jo- the beating jo- in Jonal's head is the mention of a revel tonight. Just it makes him shudder. He's already got a headache from the mild concussion he received earlier. Drink um, it off, man. He dreads that. <laughs> Um, oh, please, maybe. please, don't be. He shies away. Don't be, don't be strangers. Come, sit down, enjoy. We have, um, uh, what was his name, Serena? Davian. Oh, Davian, Davian. Davian is fetching us a fresh carafe of wine. We were just about to start uh, on, a, on a rather nice vintage of Shiraz we've all been enjoying. And please, please, come sit down. It'd be lovely to get to know all of you gentlemen. I... Have one last night of freedom, and uh, I think a bit of a party sounds like just what we need. Are you going to prison? <laughs> there's, a, there's a laugh of, uh, there's a chorus of laughs around, and uh, you hear from uh, from one of the veiled women. Um, Almost is like a prison. <laughs> um, you watch as uh, as Katarina shakes her and goes, no, no, not a real prison. I'm, I'm getting married tomorrow morning, and... Uh, Thought, uh, thought it might be nice to have one more night of revelry with my girls here, with my ladies. Where I come from, marriage is a collaborative partnership in which both members still maintain their individuality and are able to go have friends with, have fun with their friends. But um, perhaps it is different here in Barovia. It is uh, a bit different here, but I would. She leans in and she says, "I'd love to hear more about uh, where you're from and what customs you celebrate." This partnership sounds intriguing. By all means, let's get some wine and some food and let us have a good time. I'm sh- Look, Fred, I know we um, I mean, we just wrapped up a lot. Um, we had a big quest we have resolved. Perhaps it is time we relax for a moment. I think we have earned it. So, I'd like to know who is joining in the uh, the drinking with um, Jonah's not. I figured Jonah was heading inside. Uh, 
Luther, I'm guessing, probably would be up for sitting down and enjoying a wine with these lovely ladies. Theo, I'm guessing, is in Styx. What's your thoughts? Styx probably just stands at the end of the table awkwardly. Like, he can't actually do anything with the wine. So he's probably just, <laughs> just standing. pours it on his head. <laughs> <laughs> it's polite to drink the wine. <laughs> um, Sen... Oh, right. You get back here and party, Jodor. Sen is going to look at Katarina... <laughs> Look at you guys, look at Katarina, and then very pointedly sit down in between where, wherever Theo's sitting and sit in between <laughs> Theo and Katarina. Very pointedly going to sit in between them. Um, Killian, I'm guessing you're staying with the uh, the lovely ladies for a drink? I shall, yes. I won't drink too much. I'll, it'll be like slow drinking. I yeah. won't drink too much, but... Yes, I will, I will, I will reiterate my question as to who her bestowed is. Perfect. Once you have this arrive. Yeah. Tithla, are you going to drink with these lovely ladies and your friends, or are you going to head inside with Party Pooper Journal? Uh, Tithla is going to do neither, and oh. she's going to do her typical thing, forge her own path ahead. She's going yep. to stand away from the group and watch. <laughs> <laughs> Every party needs a pooper. That's why they invited you. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Jonah. What? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, what? <laughs> I wish I wish I just made that up. That is an incredible reference to DBZ abridged. Um it's one of the things Super Kami Guru uh sings at Nail um during the uh I just just look, I told you, unfortunately my memory my memory works. Yeah, my memory works in uh, in amazing ways and for things like that it is basically photographic. I could just pull into the depth of DBZ abridged <laughs> memes. <laughs> whatever i need that river runs deep and and flows slowly um jonor as you head inside you just see davian loading a crossbow <laughs> as you step inside he's just like loading the crossbow cranking it back you can see stefania next to him um like getting to get a molotov cocktail ready <laughs> she puts a rag inside a bottle of spirits and looks goes dad is this right he goes it's looking good yeah looks good <laughs> as you step inside um you sort of see him doing this, and as he looks up, he goes, Oh, I am so pleased you are here. Um, Killian, Killian indicated there was danger. Um, do we know what the danger is? Is there danger? Uh, who, who, where's the danger? We, we dealt with the druids. Are they still here? Um, I think, I think it's the women. Really? They, they, they seem, uh, Killian was a little bit weird about it. <laughs> These wormen, men of were, <laughs> you do not trust them. Um, yeah, Jonah, you watch as Davian like hands the crossbow oh, to right. you and begins loading another crossbow. <laughs> he pulls out from underneath the. Uh... He he stops. He rubs his head. He then um, finds a somewhere subtle to point to Theo, where he can get a vision vision on him, and he gives a point, sends him a message, and says. Something may not be kosher about these women. Um, Killian shared their bad vibes going on there, so just keep keep your wits about you. You know, stop ruining the revel. I, I'm. It's like we, we are finally about to have a good time. It is. I do. You, you've already gone inside and decided not to have fun with your friends. Please do not try and ruin it for the rest of us. Or do you just sing, every party needs oh, a pooper, yeah, that's why they <laughs> invited you. <laughs> party pooper. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Good um, stops. He just stands there for like two <laughs> seconds and he turns. All right. He, Theo knows that they could be dangerous. He doesn't seem too phased, though. I'm sure a man who uh, spends his time in academics might find the presence of women to be threatening. <laughs> Is it we cannot have a good time with them? Look, as, I know they've got two complete chromosomes and you've only got one, but you don't need to be threatened, Jonah. It's okay. <laughs> Just because they've got a full yeah, genetic I, sequence on their X chromosomes and you've got your broken up Y, it's all right. You don't need to be scared. He points out his finger, much, much sharper. Yeah, I haven't told you about some of my late night parties in the library, are Theo? Just. Well, come out I'm in the library. You, uh, Book club's not a party, Jonah. <laughs> you're not just not drinking beers, is what I've heard. I'm beers in my brain and oh it just the lights are too bright in here I can't I, oh, this is awful I'm, I'm, I need this rest 
with oh, that, we're going to oh, jump back oh, to you. Heard that oh, people are in danger. I need to rest. I need to have fun with my friends. I need to rest. But when do you a bloody to tree clobbered me in the head. It didn't knock me down. And from the sky, I dropped like 10 feet. I have a huge throbbing egg on my head. Yeah, you have weeks. How, how is being dropped in, um, even a concern for you? <sighs> this sounds, you just sounds like, a, like a skill issue. <laughs> um, I don't have the capacity. Killian, as you as you lean in and with with the group sort of settled, you watch as Davian walks out a bit stiffly and hands over a carafe of wine and puts it down and then doesn't hand you a glass of dry white wine given that his now focus is like preparing for danger as he walks back in. You watch as Katarina pauses for a second and goes, Oh, um, Davian, uh, uh, Killian, he, he forgot your drink, Killian. Do you want me to do you want me to call him back? Oh no, it's fine. I'll I'll get him when he come I'll get him when he comes back. It's okay. You sure? Uh, that, like it's no problem. Yes I No, it's fine. I'd be more than happy to partake in the wine that you've offered. I mean, please, another another carafe. I think with all of us, we will we will need another more. Uh, Sen, Sen, will you have a wine with us? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, I have a wine. Yeah, sounds great. Just, uh, Kill, I believe you're asking the ladies a question before um, I started weirdly staring off into the window and putting my hand up to my head and and not saying anything for a while. Yes, real inconspicuous. Um, yes, <laughs> um, uh, I was wondering um, who your betrothed is. The, uh, that is the bombshell the we're going to end on tonight. Yeah. <laughs> it's gotta be there. <laughs> there's no better there's no better cliffhanger that I can think of in the next like minute and a half that we're gonna come up with than that. So um that is that is definitely the cliffhanger we're gonna end on. Um but as you ask that question, you watch as as one the four other women around Katarina go still and all turn towards you, their eyes almost shining underneath their veils. Katarina, however, sort of laughs a little bit and a moment later all the women in unison laugh along with her it is a little bit eerie <laughs> and then as she smiles at you she goes oh I, you know i have i have a name for him that uh that just i use and that is is it killian <laughs> it's not it's not, killian. Wedding. It's not killian um she sort she's of smiles. <laughs> I call him my little devil. <laughs> no, no, no. She, she smiles. She goes. Um, no, it, it, it wouldn't I, give me a ring, though. Yeah, it wouldn't. It kept, bought, bought them and kept them for himself. Uh, so rude. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> that was well done. Uh, I think I think that's what we're going to end on tonight. That's brilliant. I think that's the last thing I want us to have for tonight. So thank you so much for joining us, everybody. That is a that is a brilliant cliffhanger to end on. <laughs> the knowledge that when Raspit proposes, he's going to be like, "I'd like to marry you." Gets down on one knee, opens up a ring. <laughs> As Lady goes, he goes, "No, that's mine." <laughs> Snaps it down, <laughs> tucks it away again. <laughs> Not for no, you. No, he kills it. Want to touch it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll kill you if you touch this. <laughs> He wouldn't do well in a divorce, would he? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Thank you so much yeah, for joining us, everybody. Oh, we need to. We need to do a. <laughs> maybe that's a Blinsky special we can do with Raspit. <laughs> oh my god! Um, yeah, you're four weeks to the funeral. The, the, the Raspit edition. <laughs> oh my god! It was. Just, it's just five funerals. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us everybody it is wonderful oh. to have you here once again uh for those of you watching on youtube and other podcasts you know the drill um engage with the uh with the algorithm wherever you can um it likes engagement um you too can uh, can pass your your natural one performance check and uh, influence the algorithm to work in our favor by simply pressing the like button leaving a comment um ideally leave a comment i think for this one as if you had rolled a natural one for your performance check i want to see the most unhinged <laughs> assessments uh from this i want to see a natural one assessment of this episode if you can give me a one sentence summary as if it was a natural one in the comments that would be amazing um i would love to see that uh but for those of you watching on twitch don't go anywhere we are going to go and raid the eldritch scribe one of our lovely friends that we often like to jump in it looks like they have just started um their new season their new um episode of uh, realm hunters although i think it might be might be a rebroadcast i'm not sure if they're live in that case then we might go see if we can jump in and see if anyone's alive let's see if any of our lovely other friends are alive uh looks like evil doers up but he's playing some sort of pinocchio thing 
let's go jump in with... Where's a nice small group? Oh, let's go jump in with um, Kozawari. Looks like they're doing a really cool playthrough of... Uh, ah, looks like a really interesting D&D &D homebrew game. Let's go jump in with them. So, for all of us here tonight, thank you so much. Stay safe, stay well, and we will see you all again very, very soon. It was uh, lovely to have you back with us. Uh, Josh, it was wonderful to have you with us. Um, thank you so much for uh, for rejoining us. It is great to have uh, have Killian back. Definitely one of our one of our favorite guest characters. And make sure that you go and check out uh, Roll Together's new campaign, which you can find in the link below. Mm. But from all of us here tonight, yeah. stay safe, stay well, and we will see you all again very, very soon. Until then, farewell, everybody. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. Thank you.